Hey, uh, this is Stacia, and we are going to play a training game on chess.com. My last game was surprisingly easy against an 1860. Uh, it's weird because, like, sometimes you play, like, a 1500 who plays, like, a boss, and then you play an 1800 that plays, like, a noob. So I don't, you know, I don't understand uh, chess.com. All right, so it looks like we have the white pieces, and we're playing a 1739. I will play knight f3. And bishop to c4. This is the Italian opening. Ooh, okay. And, hmm. I think I will play Evan's Gambit. If I could learn something new about Evan's Gambit, I'd be quite happy because I intend to play that at Kings Island in November. Actually, that tournament's coming up really soon. Oh my gosh. I just suddenly felt feel nervous from that. <laughs> Because, wow, it's, it's in, uh, it's not this weekend, but next weekend? Oh, two weekends away, I think. Okay, so two weeks. All right, so C3, here's the point of, of the opening. We're going to play our D4. So I'm playing the normal uh, main line. I actually faced um, Bishop E7 at Parma recently. I would show the game on my channel, except my opponent just, like, they just blunder out of nowhere in the middle game. So I might show it anyway, but I don't know. It's not that interesting, I guess. Okay, so I take. Now you can castle or play queen b3 here. I do both. I think I will go queen b3 in this case. It does get a tempo. And the reason I really like it is that we're following the Bobby Fischer versus Dr. Ruben Fine game, which I know extremely well because I've taught it like one million times. It's a great game for showing how to keep the initiative. And that's also Black being greedy that game and <laughs> grabbing that pawn, which isn't the best idea, honestly. Dr. Fine was an opening theoretician, though. So my theory is that since it was a casual game, that maybe he wanted to see, like maybe he was curious how Bobby Fischer would, would play. Or... Maybe he analyzed it and thought he really could hold on to that pawn. But I kind of don't think he analyzed it. I don't think he did. All right, so we castled. Of course, taking the free pawn on, on e4 is no good. We'll go rook e1. It is supported by the knight. That will win the game. So they can't take. So... I think they have a few different moves they can play. D6 might be a move. I mean, they can play this, but then I think after knight takes, they should take. I play queen takes, and it's still uncomfortable for black, I'll say that. Ooh, bishop B6 I think is the best move, actually. Um, the point is actually, not only are they um, aiming at the center, and ultimately f2, just good spot for the bishop. They're also making way for this knight a5 move, which punish, punishes this whole idea. So, what is the main move here? I do believe it is c takes d4, just from memory. I think it's c takes d4, and they could take that though, right? Hmm. Oh, now I have to kind of remember. C takes d4 if knight takes. I mean, what else would it be though? That's the thing. I don't think it's bishop a3, because then just d6.
Maybe negative five even. Tadaka. You know what? I think I can play queen d1. I've looked at this move before. I think queen d1 is a move. It stops that knight a5 thing and it applies pressure back on d4. Like, if this is designed to punish queen b3, then, you know, let's go back. And then go from there. And this bishop is not on the king side, which means we can still attack on that side. I think I might play queen d1 because <laughs> I don't know what else to do. I don't like the look of this. This might be the move, but... Tick, 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 tick. Then what? Might be it, actually. Let's look at this for a second. I take, they take, take, take. Bishop e2, maybe? Hmm. All right, so I have to go queen d1 or pawn takes pawn. Queen d1 is interesting to me. So I'm going to do it. I'm just glancing to see if I'm missing something. I like queen d1, though. The other idea, too, is like now when I take and move the knight, I still have this rook e1 idea when before um, there was queen takes e1 checkmate, which, you know, that would be sad. So I don't want to allow that. <laughs> I've got a nice ginger drink. Yummy. It's spicy and bold. Mmm. So delicious. They're not sponsoring me. <laughs> I just like it. <laughs> Now let's hear a word from our sponsor, Fever... Tr no, okay. <laughs> I play chess for myself. I don't really need a sponsor. Um, strange to say, but money has never been... Uh, I, I, I figured out a long time ago that money... And material things are not as important as some other things in life. But you need enough money to be, like, comfortable. You can't be, like, struggling for money. That, that yeah, then money is more important. But if you reach a point where you're comfortable and you have, then gratefulness, I think, is an important, uh, it's an important trait to, to develop and focus on instead of greed, which is, to me, like, all too prevalent in America. All right, so anyway, um, they decided to go D6. Um, and they're going to pin us on G4. We usually don't want to stop that move because we want to do something a little faster than that. So now this move definitely comes to mind. Um, when they pin us, though... I vaguely remember this move A4 is a thing. But I don't exactly know why. I could go bishop g5. But then knight f6. Well, on knight f6, e5, pawn takes e5. Then bishop e3. Oh, no, we can't. Bishop already moved. Bishop a3 is a common idea in the Evans, but usually when the pawn's already on d6, there's kind of no point anymore. Um, 
my instinct is to take. Then they pin us. If knight c3, take, take. F7's getting loose. Yeah, I think it's okay to play this way. The main reason you do this is you build a big center and you clear the square for knight c3. The knight could happen to here with tempo. Oops. Yeah, and they pin us, which is what I expected. Now, I've had at least two coaches yell at me about playing h3 in Evans Gambit. <laughs> so, so I don't really want to play that, if I, but I need to find something better. Because when you're down a pawn, you can't play slowly. You should play for rapid development. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, I am pinned, though. Which means they could take this. It's kind of annoying. I mean, bishop e3 can't be right. Wow, I saw something a little pretty, though. If bishop e3... Wait, does this work? They could take this. Check here, knight g5 check, that's a fork. They move their king, but we take their queen and then they take our queen, so that's sad. And their queen also defends the bishop from there, so I guess it doesn't work. Aw, <laughs> I liked it. Um, Something tells me e5 might be an idea or maybe this because I don't think we want to save our pawn. Let's say we go here and they go knight e5. I could then check if I wanted to. That breaks the pin. And then I could take, I don't know though, I don't know. Doesn't look right to me. I'm thinking queen d3, just break the pin. That's honestly what I'm thinking. And if they take here and this, Maybe queen g3. Hmm. I don't know. This feels difficult. Evan's Gambit always is. Um, hmm. I don't want to go bishop e3, but I feel like maybe since I'm getting low on time, maybe it's a good practical choice. I could go knight c3, then if takes, knight d5. That develops. I'm going to play it. <laughs> yeah, I have to. Uh, I was looking for best moves, but Evan's Gambit's hard. 
I need a lot of time to find the best moves. Well, we'll definitely learn from this game because I don't I don't feel like I did this right or that I understand it. <laughs> so we'll go from there. Um So basically, they can play knight takes d4 right now if they want. I kind of decided that I don't really care about this pawn, and I really don't care if they double all the pawns. That's kind of what I decided. I'm going to go for development instead. And if I get these double pawns, with the lead in development, it's possible I could go king h1, rook g1, maybe apply pressure there. If they go queen side, I've got these open files to utilize. So these are my ideas and why I'm playing this way. And I do like the look of this, right? Like it's active and their knight is still on G8. So let's, let's analyze knight of six. Like if they go knight of six, cause I, I kind of know what I'm going to do if they take, oh, they took. Okay. Well, I was thinking knight d5, and they could take, check, takes, then the bishops hit and the queens hit. So actually, if this, they could move the queen, it's one thing they could do. Nope, can't go there. Yeah, I don't know. I like this. I'm just doing it. Okay, I don't have a lot of time. I don't really think they can move the queen so easily. So if they can't, then I think they have to play. Yeah, it's hard for them to play. Because like, like I was saying, if here and here, can they play bishop takes? Because then, if I take their queen, they take my queen. I take their knight, though. It still works. So we... Well, I could just take it, though. I just take it. <laughs> so I don't know why I thought that would work. Yeah, I think knight d5 is stronger than I first thought. It kind of like refutes this whole thing. So if they have to move their queen, where does the queen go? I guess the queen could go here, but... I don't know. I don't think that works, actually. Maybe it does. If I take here, I'm on their queen. But then they take here with check. Okay, but then once again, I take, I'm attacking the bishop. I'm also attacking the queen. So they're in trouble. So yeah, like, I don't know. I think this move was a lot stronger than I thought. I guess I could try this, but I mean, this alignment looks no good. If there, I just take the bishop. Look at that. It protects. It protects our bishop as well. So once again, they could play check, like here takes check. But again, I'm attacking the bishop again. They can go here attacking the rook. I haven't really looked at that for some reason, even though that's totally normal. 
Probably because I literally don't care about my rook. It hasn't really moved and I'm not getting F4 in anytime soon. So I might be okay with that. I'm not sure though. <laughs> um, but I honestly don't know what they should play here. I mean, queen d8? <laughs> queen d8 comes to mind. Queen d8 comes to mind. I honestly think that's the best move. I don't see what to do on that. You know what? Queen d8, maybe bishop g5. Why not? Oh, actually there's check here. And they win it. And with the king open on g1, that looks scary. My assessment is scary. No like. Okay, so they're using time now as well. That's a good thing. So we're two pawns down. They can win more material right now, I think. But they could also lose material. Um, I'm expecting queen d8 at this point. Although they could also try something like queen e5. I take their queen, they take my queen. Yeah, maybe. That might lose because I don't know why I'm analyzing all this. I guess I have time. If here takes, then I'm wondering about knight f7. Because then if the king takes, then we have knight takes b6, check, followed by that. Okay, so I took with the bishop here. Okay, so we're down a piece. If I take their queen, they take my queen. So I think I just take this. And I like the fact that I'm going to take that and I'm attacking the knight. So what are they going to do? There's no queen of six. Will they go queen e5 though? If queen e5, can I play f4? And then on takes, I still have rook e1. And there's not this, because I take it anyway. Bishop guards. So I think we're okay here. It's Evan's Gambit. You can't be concerned about this stuff. If you're if you're concerned about this stuff, then don't play Evan's Gambit. Man, did I call that? They play Queen E5. Now I think I'm gonna go F4. I do, because it guards this check too, which I like. It's guarded by a pawn even. And it sacks another pawn, which I love. And then they can't take it though. Rookie one. So here, and they go somewhere, but then I take and win the knight. So I think f4 is the way to go. I'm playing f4.
trying to look for ideas by them. What can they do now? I mean, there's still no queen of six. <laughs> like they'd like to go there, but nope, sorry. They could go here, but that blunders a queen in one move. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that right away. Uh, what else? I, I mean, there's nowhere to go. Are they? Wait, is their queen trapped? That's disgusting if their queen is trapped. I mean, that gets hit by this. That loses. That loses. That loses. That loses. That loses. Wow. Okay, so I trapped the queen and didn't even know. <laughs> so. There's a saying in chess, the good player is always lucky. Well, every now and then a bad player gets lucky too. So, <laughs> you know, I just proved it. <laughs> okay, they're probably they probably have some move I'm not thinking of. So let's look. They must have something, right? They can't just like this can't be the winning move. F four. It might be though. It feels like a winning move. Yeah. So I go here. Obviously, that gives away a knight though. I think I have to take that, but it's a piece. And then I don't have rookie one anymore. But their queen will have to move. So let's take and see what they want to do. Oh, my rook. Forgot about my rook. Oops. I actually don't think it's a problem. Let's see. Because we have these discoveries and hmm, all I need to do is trap them. You know what's funny is knight c3, knight c3 locks that queen up, locks her up. And then bishop a3. And we win the queen. Probably knight c3 is what I'm going to do. Because, like, I don't see a way out for her. And then here comes bishop a3. We could also go e5 first. Mm, I'm going to do this first. You know, it's sad, though, because I didn't even see the rook hanging. Like, what's wrong with me? <laughs> didn't even look at it. <laughs> I also don't care that much, but that's no excuse. I should see it hanging before I sacrifice it. Unhinged chess here at chess is best. That's how we do it. We go, oh, I didn't see they could take my rook, but I'm glad they did. <laughs> That's how we play here. Ooh, that's a pretty good move. Ooh, that seems to work pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I need to pay more attention. I'm, I'm just missing things left and right. Um, queen h4 is an idea. Knight b5 is an idea. Knight b5, the castle. Knight takes a 7 check. King b8. Knight b5 attacks the bishop. I like it. Threatens a fork. 
it saves the night. So that's a lot of things. Let's play it. I have no clue who's going to win. They're up in material, but their king's also on e8. And their queen's almost trapped. So anything could happen here, in my estimations. So if I play bishop a3 next, do I win their queen? I think the answer is yes. Yeah, even if they retreat to f6, bishop a3, and their queen is still lost, as far as I can tell. It opens up this attack. The bishop guards a2. The other bishop guards this. Knight guards this. Pawn guards this. Bishop occupies that. <laughs> That's the entire diagonal. So, and by the way, I'm threatening the bishop. I'm threatening a fork. Let it go. You know, let's threaten things. That's what you do when you're down material. Yeah, and then I was calculating this, like, queenside, castle, check, king b8. Can I come back? Yeah, they do castle. All right, maybe bishop a3 immediately, though. Seems to make some sense to me. I don't really see what they do there. Probably take the rook, which is fine. Let's let them do that if they want to. I guess they could do something like check and then save the queen. But that still wins some material. And then I really like the position of our queen because after check, King b8, knight back, we're threatening mean things. So will they give up their bishop? I, okay, they give the queen instead. Very suspicious, but okay. Always play bishop f1. I probably will. I don't really see why I want my bishop here, but this, that square looks good. So yeah, bishop f1. Now their bishop's hanging. They just hung their bishop. Aw, that's kind of a sad way to end the game. Yeah, look at that. When you hang your rook by accident, <laughs> then then you end up with more material. That's how good it is. All right, yeah, I don't know, crazy game. Uh, I'm just gonna tell my opponent. They are a good player. So, wow, crazy game. Sorry it ended like that. You are a good player. Thank you for the game. Always practice good sportsmanship. All right. Now, um, let's have a look at this crazy thing. I guess I'll just do the, uh, you know, we're not going to analyze in depth. I, I, I rarely do for training games, but I will analyze. So, it looks like in the graph... White was better. I made some kind of crazy blunder. And then white was better. Um, I didn't play with amazing accuracy, but I have a newsflash for you guys. If you play the Scandi, for example, or a closed position, like a Roy Lopez or something, it's way easier to get over 90% accuracy because there's so many moves you can choose that are correct, that are good moves. And with a position that's closed, you can maneuver around and it won't hurt your position really. Um, but sharp positions, uh, those are harder to play with accuracy because they're difficult. So the difficulty increases. So in a game like this, 79 is par for the course for me. But when I play a simple closed position, I usually get like 91 or something, even without trying. But this game, I definitely think I made some mistakes. And I want to see the opening especially. 
So let's get going. All right, so we had Evans Gambit, D4 takes Queen B3. Yeah, so I kind of want to review for a second the other line if I just castle. So if I just castle, let's just look at the main line real quick. Oh yeah, knight g to e7. I remember this move. Uh, here I'd be very tempted to go knight g5. That's the main move. Because now castling loses the game. They have to go d5 here and attack the bishop. And I'll show you why. If they castle, there's queen h5 threatening mate, h6, and then boom, knight takes f7. And this also happens in the molar attack. And then after takes, we go check. Wait, do we take with the queen? I don't know. Yeah. And then here. And then boom, boom. And I don't know, something. Maybe. Yeah, this is actually not winning, amazingly. Maybe I missed something. You have to go C takes D4 here. Wow, I had a game. I, like, I had a tournament game at Parma that went kind of like this. I thought I was winning, and then suddenly I wasn't. Yeah, like after check, king h7. Yeah, this is very similar to my game. And then you have to just build up. Like, I don't know what else to do. Like, this is a draw. Yeah, the best thing we can do now is draw. That's interesting. Okay, that's a good reminder that that doesn't always win. So let's continue now. Um, queen b3, attacked f7, they defended it. Castle, castle exclam. The most normal move in Evan's Gambit, exclam. Okay, just.com. <laughs> All right, bishop b6. I'm going to get bishop b6 exclaim. That's a good move. But even that is just theory. Oh, and I want queen d1. Now, I got this queen d1 idea from Stockfish, but Stockfish gets stronger all the time. So it's either that's the reason, or we're using a low-depth engine that doesn't see why it's good. So maybe I was wrong about queen d1. Um, instead, I am supposed to play c takes d4. Now, I mentioned this in the game. Now, I'm going to not look at the analysis. Um, I thought if takes, I thought knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes, they're attacking our rook. Now, I have the option of knight c3 or bishop e2. I was looking at bishop e2, and then I was looking at this because it attacks g7. But then knight f6, I thought. Yeah, and this is what the computer thinks, too. We can play e5, but knight g4. And black is the one that is better here. Although I think this position still has fight in it. So now let's see what the engine says, because I don't understand this move. I couldn't figure it out. It does say knight takes d4, and knight takes d4, and bishop takes d4. But then knight c3. So this move is wrong, which I didn't realize. Instead, you go knight c3. OK. Yeah, and then they go knight to f6. So knight c3, man. It's harder to play that because it's pinned. And this, that's kind of loose, but not really. And then they can play knight to f6. And they're about to castle next, and they're attacking this. And we can't take. But then we go rook d1. Oh, I remember this move now. I analyzed this a long time ago. <laughs> I remember this move now. I've never seen it in a game, though. I'll tell you that. But if I knew this, if I remembered it, it would help me play the correct move. Because uh, I'll know the correct move, or I'll think I know the correct move. And I calculate, and then I go, wait, I don't know. I don't understand this. And then I don't play it. But we attack the bishop. If they take it, queen takes. Now this pawn's hanging. If queen takes pawn, we have rook e1. The queen is defending. And if knight takes, probably rook e1. Nope, queen takes g7. <laughs> queen takes g7, attacking the rook. The rook should probably go to f8. 
and then Ricky won because we're mean. And this time, the rook doesn't have to be defended because there's only a knight here, not a queen, and the knight cannot check us. Whoops. If the knight could do that, check, and then, then there would be checkmate. Well, bishop f1 even. So yay, we survived no matter what. All right. <laughs> Interesting stuff. I like reviewing this. Now, queen d1 I thought was good, and it is not. So I remembered wrong. Queen d1. They played d6, which was the best. Wow. So I was worse here. I kind of got the feeling I was worse. I didn't say anything, but I did feel it. Bishop g4. Yeah, I thought a long time here, and I'm glad to see I found the right move. Because there's problems here. Like, if you go h3, take, take, and like, take. And then I thought about queen g3 here. Notice there's no fork, because we do have a bishop. I had to notice that. <laughs> and, uh... And then I'm attacking this. But even here, um, engine gives queen takes e4 or just castle. Hmm. Hard for me to understand, honestly. Queen takes e4. What? I would take this. Computer says, no problem. Queen g6. You can have the rook if you want. Wow. Because knight f3 check. Oh, I wasn't looking at my king. Yeah, maybe this is bad. And then bishop d4. Trapping the rook. Oh, it's worse than that. Oh my gosh. The knight in f3 defends it. Oh my gosh, that's sick. <laughs> okay, stockfish. I agree, that's really good. Congrats. Um... So h3 is definitely really horrible. Now I'll also show, I thought about bishop e3. I think this is not good either. Because after takes, um, well, they could take here, but like I'm not being aggressive here. Like this is not what you do as Evan's Gambit, you know? Like why am I playing passively? Oh, and I even thought maybe they take with a queen here. And I was looking at this for a second. Check, check here, because this is a nice fork. But then there's a problem. The problem is the queen defends the bishop. <laughs> and even if they move their king, I don't know where. Let's say here. I can take their queen, but they take my queen. So luckily I did realize that this doesn't work. So I didn't go for it. Um, so once I realized those didn't work, that's when I found knight c3 because I was like, hey, this this uh, knight d5 move looks good. And it is good. Ooh, it gave it exclam. Yeah, and during the game, I realized that this move was a lot stronger than I first thought because all the responses I thought they were going to do, I realized they couldn't do them. Um, so they took here. Yeah, like, for example, if they played check, we take here. We're attacking the bishop, actually. And they can attack our rook, but we don't care. That's a queen. So that actually just doesn't work. They can't play knight takes knight. And there's more moves. If they play, um, if they move the queen, like I thought, if they go here. I mean, this just looks bad, right? Knight, knight c7 check, discovered. And um, I also looked at this. If here, I thought... Um, yeah, knight takes b6, tacking the queen. Now they can take with check, takes. Now we're on the bishop again. They have to move their bishop. They can attack our rook again, but once again, we win the queen. <laughs> so they take back, and white's winning. So yeah, this was like a lot stronger. I didn't work all this out before I played it, but then once I was here, I realized. So after, um, so they took the bishop, which is what I thought was best takes and queen e5 and here i thought i found a very strong move it looks like i was wrong i thought f4 just wins f4 is a blunder <laughs> of course why is it a blunder though i don't know probably because this whole queen trap thing doesn't work yeah so i just blunder my rook i think oh it actually says queen e4 i'm shocked i'm shocked i thought ricky won here 
Rook e1, but knight f3 check. Oh. I missed this. I missed knight f3 check. No, I did not see this. It's guarded by the queen. But wait a minute. Oh, we're defending the rook. <laughs> That's sad. That's so sad. We can play bishop f1 at least. That's bad because of 97 apparently. Better is king g2. I don't know why. I really don't. Oh, I know why. Probably because they can take an f2. Or can they? Nah, they can't. All right, anyway. Um, wow. Yeah, and if you step here, then they're going to win this for free. That's check. And if you step here, I was thinking knight h2. Nope, engine says, that's good, but Stacia, take a rook. Okay, that's fair. Um, so I just missed knight f3. So that's why f4 is a blunder. So if any of you guys saw that, congrats. I didn't see it. I thought this just wins on the spot because I thought the queen is trapped. And I didn't even look at this check. It is a check. They did this move, but they did it in the wrong move order. They should have taken first. Like, I actually expected this move, rookie one. Then this is good. Actually, black's still better here, but it's not, like, as bad as the game. So, I want a free piece here. They took the rook. Yeah, and notice, like, my intuition was spot on. Because when they took the rook, I did not quite believe it. I just felt like white's better. And turns out I was right. Although I was I'm mostly confused. But, erring on... Erring? Uh, leaning on the side of right. Okay, so, <laughs> exciting game, right? I love Evan's Gambit. So... Knight c3 is a mistake, and it's because of what was played in the game, I'm sure. No, it's not. Hmm. So, if I want to trap the queen here, I should go queen e2. I didn't think about this move. They can't go there or there. But they can go here, right? They can go there. Oh, wow. That's cool. <laughs> so that score's not available because of a skewer. And the rest are taken. That's taken by a knight. That's taken. They could go here, though. And if they go here, bishop b2, we lock them in. This is still guarded by the bishop. And, yeah, they're trapped. Okay, so different way of trapping. Same idea. Better execution by stockfish. Okay. But in the game, I played the more normal way, knight c3. <laughs> At least it looks normal to me. I've done this many times, this knight c3 thing. And they get here. And I found knight b5. Yeah, and this did feel strong to me. Castle. Now, I was originally planning knight a7 check, but why not just play bishop a3? Because this wins, I thought they should play bishop f7 here. What's the computer say? Nope, computer says... No way. Oh, because queen takes and they're still trapped. Wow. Wait, don't they come here? Oh, but then um, bishop d5. Hmm. Offering a fork, but then we take here. And that's starting to look really scary. Check. Here. Check. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So in the game, though, yeah, it had a sad end where they just hung their bishop at the end. Like, oh, they're low on time. That's probably why. And they're probably an actual adult because um, kids don't do this very much. Um, kids can be very fast, especially like I've noticed like 11 year olds specifically. I don't know what it is about 11 year olds. They're super fast. <laughs> like they turn 11 and they're like, hi, I'm super fast all of a sudden. It's like, okay. <laughs> Except for Colin, he was fast when he was nine. He was probably fast when he was eight. All right, anyway. Um, 
yeah, what a game. What a game. So what I learned from this one, Evan's Gambit, um, I learned that this bishop b6 move is best, but instead of queen d1, I should just take. And the line there was take, take. And instead of bishop b2, knight c3. So this is how I need to do it. And then after takes, we're on that. And white's a lot better here. Huh. Yeah, I just didn't know this. But in this particular game, I was worse, but I found knight c3. So playing for development helps because knight d5 hit really hard. Takes, takes, f4. Yeah, and f4 was a blunder because I didn't see that after the pin they have that knight f3 thing. They went knight f3 first. Then we had this like queen trap part of the game. And it did work. I won their queen. And then they hung a bishop in that end of the game. But even before they hung a bishop, uh, white was a lot better, which is pretty much what I thought too. So, yeah, I mean, we, when you win their queen, you know, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty good usually. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I really enjoyed this game. This is the kind of chess I like. So, yay gambits, especially Evan's gambit. Um, all right, I'll be back with more unhinged lunatic chess. Okay, bye. <laughs>